Oh, well, hello there again, friends and family. It has been a while since we've seen you. I mean, I think it's been a while since you've seen me here in the focus. And today, since it is the middle of the day, you know, heat of the day, when we would normally be in doing some other things to get out of this here uh, blazing sun and devastating heat, which uh, is currently, according to the focus, under degrees out where we're sitting right at the moment. Albeit we're sitting out in the sun, not in the shade. Uh, the last time I checked the official uh, climate control center, you know, in the carport, it was 90 in the shade. Yeah, 68% humidity at the time. Or was it 78? I can't remember. Anyway, that'll be going up as the day progresses. Because it appears we have more rain coming in. Which has sort of been the case almost every day. We've been having rain. Mostly in the late afternoons, early evenings, up into around, you know, midnight, one in the morning. It doesn't amount to a whole lot, sometimes about three to four tenths of an inch. But hey, that's way better than what we've been having. So, with it comes many challenges. Mostly disease, yeah. And we've been fighting that. Sometimes we win, sometimes we lose. And you'll be seeing all of that in our next gardening walkabout video for sure you will but for now we're gonna take a ride so if you'd like jump all on in buckle up uh, ask your neighbor before jumping on their lap those of you who want prefer the rumble seat you know aka the trunk help yourself no hanging on the roof or the hood the police ain't liking that so hey like I said jump on in buckle up let's take a ride on a beautiful Saturday afternoon in the deep south of Alabama. Well, as you can see, it's a partly cloudy, or as I like to refer to it, partly sunny day here in my part of the deep south of the United States of America. Alabama, that is. Yeah, we've got a pretty painted sky, as some would say. Yep, we do. And I don't have any place I really want to go. I just wanted to take a ride. Because it had been quite some time. Well, it looks like we might have some rain moving in before we know it. Well, right, we'll head her on down here. Right beside the big woods. I think we'll just take a ride. Got a motorcycle behind us, some youngins. I'm sure they're impatient. They'll probably zip right around us. Nope, they went the other way. They're just out enjoying the ride and enjoying what little sun they can lap up. And I've lapped up enough sun. Just getting the watering done, the pruning, the tying up, the picking. Yeah the everyday thing that goes on in the gardens sometimes twice sometimes three times a day and that's the way it is once you start it doesn't stop until those crisp clean cooler winds start to blow in the winter but that's a long way away for us our first frost probably won't come, oh, until late November, first week or two in December. All depends. But I've made it this far, you know, it being August the 20th, on this fine Saturday. And yeah, I'm going to spend a little money here in fuel to take us all for a ride. But it ain't going to be much. It's not like we're going all that far. It's just something enjoyable. Take a look and see how the land fares and how people fare along the way. Yeah, far too many. Don't even want a day like this to come. They're all prepared right at the moment or preparing as fast as they can for the end of the world, it would seem. 
I'm not too worried about the end of the world anymore. I'm just worried about the next day. I mean, if that's what you want to do, that's fine with me. And I'm sure it's fine with you. Oh, we we'll see, we got a, some new neighbors up here. We got them a camper trailer throw down right there. Must have uh, bought that lot, or maybe that's family. Other people just up the way. Don't know. But where we're currently at is on what was known as, or is known as, Ice Plant Road. And the reason it's called Ice Plant Road is, well, because it used to have an ice plant on it. You know, that was way, way back in the days of yore. You know, shortly after dinosaurs were defeated, you know. You know, back in those days, <clears throat> excuse me, when all of us had to walk 20 miles on our bare feet back and forth to school. You remember those days, don't you? I love that chimney there with the big B on it. Did you see that? Because that marks the spot where once upon a time there was a homestead. Or was it a farmstead? It was something. And those people, they were always living in preparedness mode. Yeah. For the next winter to come. I mean, back in the pioneering days, you know, there was always winter, and you always had to make it through, no matter where you were. Some places were tougher than others. Surely they were. And if you didn't prepare for the onset of winter, you would surely starve, freeze to death, and die. Hmm, that's a nice looking crop over there. It appears to be some late corn. Yeah. Somebody planted some corn after they harvested their wheat. You remember we came down through here in the early, early spring, or maybe it was late winter. And there was winter wheat growing in that field. Where now, there's about, oh, waist high corn. He's gonna get them two crops out of that land he is. And it looks really fine. All nice and green it does. Because this rain we've been getting the last few weeks has really been perking things up. Where once we were suffering through a drought, we no longer are. But we still got that blazing heat and that radiation. Woo, because when that sun peeks out from the clouds, it's just like a magnifying glass. It wants to burn right through you. Over here on the right, I've already showed you a field such as this. Here's another Milo field. Right to the right. Of course, you know, I could have been wrong. That field that I said was corn, which I do believe it is corn, it could have been Milo. I didn't get close enough. I ain't got my specs on. But either way, he's getting a second crop. And we're out here, this road sort of meanders along by the lake. Not the first lake, Lake Tallahassee or the middle pond. This this road sort of meanders by Lake Yates, which is the middle pond. Lake Tallahassee is what's referred to as the littlest pond or little pond. Anyways, I know it's all confusing. Oh, we're gonna go on down here. Last time we were here, focus had a hard time getting up this here uh, red clay hill. Started spinning. This time, it made it no problem. It's a little bumpy. I apologize for that. But you can see either side. The trees are looking just marvelous. All green. Where, you know, in some years, they've been dropping their leaves this time of year early. Why? heat, stress, and drought. But I haven't seen much of that here of late. Oh, and there's a lot of places tore up in this road now. Hmm. I'm thinking because they're getting some type of service put in. Maybe it's county water. Probably is, if I had to guess. Who knows? There's a lot of little blue flags along the side of the road. 
we're so far out here in the country, you know, most people think ain't nobody else going to be coming. And they just drive down the middle of the road. No, there was a one of those old clawfoot tubs at the end of that driveway. It would need refinishing. Crepe myrtles are still in bloom. Now, it's been forever since I've seen crepe myrtles bloom this long, but they have. And just like the last time we came down this way, in what I now recall was late winter, we've come to the dead end. And we're going to have to make a turnaround. Sure enough, we are. You can see out in there, those are the dark, deep woods. Because other than this road with some houses, you know, on the left here, which down below them in their backyards would be the lake. That's all that's out here. It is darn right peaceful, you know, except for people like me, neighbors that come rambling by to check on them. There are some beautiful homes back here. Once upon a time, I envisioned myself having one back here. But then reality hit me, and I realized, number one, it would be nice. Number two, I really didn't need it. The kids were, you know, graduating, moving away, going into service. And me having a big old home here on the lake, <clears throat> just for me and the wife at the time, really, didn't make a whole lot of sense. And now the way things have turned out in my retirement, I'm surely glad I didn't go that route. Because I'd still be, if I was alive, having to work. Because I'd still probably most likely still had a mortgage. And if you're not yet retired, but you're closing on retirement age, or maybe you're not. Maybe it's 10 to 20 years down the road. The best favor you can ever do yourself and the best advice I can ever give you is to pay off the home place. Get that mortgage off of the place that keeps you cool in the summer, warm in the winter, and dry. It'll be the best advice I can ever give and will eliminate a lot of your anxiety and worry later in life because if I had a mortgage payment right now or God forbid have to pay rent whew, I would be working doing something I surely wouldn't be riding around in the car no with all of you even though I'm happy when I'm out here with you and I haven't been with you as much of late mostly because I've got the gardens to tend to, two and three times a day to keep them alive. i got the kitty crew. I've got me, you know, and all of you have been wondering, and I've conversed with many of you, on just how the old man's been doing. <coughs> Excuse me. That Milo's looking good out there, though, I will say. See, we even wave. I may know him, he may know me, but right now, at the moment, I can't remember. But how am I doing? Well, it's like I told many of y'all. I'm doing the best I can at the moment. I got all my blood work tests back. The only thing they said was my glucose was out of range. Yep. So you need to limit that sugar and all that, you know sort of put you in the range of pre-diabetes here at the tender age of 66 going on 67. Yeah, and it ain't because I'm overweight, so yeah, I could stand to lose a little. I was 172. I, I like to stay around, you know, my girlish figure weight of a 160, 165. So I could lose some. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's starting to sprinkle. Even though if you look up, we can see some blue skies and some big puffy white clouds. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's going to rain a lot or a little. It really don't matter. I'm enjoying the ride, and I hope you are too. 
But the other thing that came back from the test was my PSA. And this concerns us men, you know, has to deal with, excuse me, ladies, the, you know, prostate. And as we get older, you know, there's all kinds of things that can happen. It can get enlarged, which is okay, but if it gets too enlarged, it's not okay. Uh, and of course, there's prostate cancer. And if your PSA uh, score is so much, well then they say it could be an indicator that you might have, could have, prostate cancer. So, I've got to go in on September 2nd and get another PSA test. And see, you know, if it's came down, about the same, whatever. Depending on what it is at that point, will depend on whether, you know, I get scheduled to go see one of them there ureologist guys or gals and here we are we're on you know a nice clay dirt road yep we back in the sticks baby but I love this road yep I don't know if you can hear me because it's a rumbling but it's enjoyable well, we're going to have to clear that windshield a little bit. Because with it getting, you know, darker and rain spotted, in fact, I ain't got my spectacles on at the moment, it's a little bit difficult to see. So we'll just clear that off a little bit. Pardon the wipers. But then my other tests come back. You know, uh, said my kidney function looked good, my liver function, all my other functions look good. Yep. So that was the only two things on that battery of tests that I finally found out. But then, like I said, last week I went to the local hospital and had some other tests. They were uh, these here ultrasounds of your veins and your arteries. Yep. And then they check your blood pressure down at your ankles and at your wrists and, you know, other places. And uh, had that all done. I think that was Thursday. Or was it Tuesday? Either way. Finally found the results from them yesterday. And I guess it's a good thing. They said they were normal. But that all gets back to the fact that at times you know I have issues you know some would say maybe they're heart related but so far like the last time I went through all this a few years back of course then I was working insane hours seven days a week anywhere from 14 to 19 20 hours a day yeah I can sort of see it and it's not that I just sit on my derriere now, because I don't. You know, I'm out toting water every day, two gallons at a time. And I do that purposely, you know. I could drag the hose all around. Yep, yeah, but I do it so I can get exercise. I get to walking. I'm carrying. It's my way of getting out and getting her done and you know trying to tone up a little bit well the best you know one little old man can it's like you know, i'm not going to become arnold schwarzenegger anytime soon you know what i mean uh, i'm not saying i couldn't or haven't been in the past you know or maybe a jack valane you know he went right on up until the day he laid the barbells down the final time he was a good person Jack Blaine was. If you don't know who he was, he was sort of like the original exercise man way before Arnold Schwarzenegger. Most of you, my viewers, will know who I'm talking about. Some of the youngins won't. That's okay. Yeah, there's, somebody threw them up a nice double wide back up in there. I mean, living on this road, albeit, you know, you would need a specially modified focus like mine, you know, all-wheel drive, uh, you know, convertible suspension, 
gator tires, and of course, time machine. So in case we break down or get stuck or whatever, we can just, you know, fire up the gravity flux generator and uh, go back in time before we actually went down this road. Man, if you if you ever see the option for, uh, you know, a time generator on your uh, option list for your new vehicle, I would suggest you get it. It beats everything. I mean, you don't even need to prep once you got that. I mean, I don't even have my bug out, my bug back bag. What is it? Uh, get home bag? Bug back bag? Uh, it's not a bug out bag because we're already out. So it'd be like a, a bug, bug home bag. I'm thinking. I don't have any of that because I got a time machine. We just fire it up and set the way back dial to the time when we were sitting in the driveway getting all buckled in and boom, there we are. We're back all safe. The ultimate survival prepping device. Time machine. Of course, to get one, even though uh, it would be nice if they were made available on the options list of all new vehicles. Now, I personally built my own, you know, being an engineer that I am, and that. And many of you have come when we have been using it. We went back to many places in time. I could go ahead into the future, but that, that wouldn't be fair. You might learn things that wouldn't be fair. You know, and then you come back, invest in it, come wealthy, you know, upset the whole timeline thing. And then, you know, Bill Gates' youngest sibling or child will be president, the whole world would end, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So you got to be careful when using a time machine. But anyway, all my tests have come back good which I know many have said many friends that I discussed this with prior to coming on here and visiting with all of you my friends and family I said oh that's marvelous yeah it's marvelous but the fact is at times I still feel just slap more down you know to the point where yeah I could just lay on the couch with the kitty group for a couple of days on end. I'm not saying I haven't done that. Where it's you know struggle just to get up and uh, feed them and make food for me. You know it's at times like that. Thank God for you know Betty Crocker and uh, Chef Boy R D, Mary Collinders. You know all the all the helpers. Mrs. Stratton, Mrs. Stokers, you know, I've dated them all through the course of my life. Maybe many of you have as well. But yeah, like I told my son, you know, I'm in the best of health for somebody feeling off and on not so good. But hey, maybe it'll be like the last time. You know, I went through about 18 months of tests, and I guess by the time uh, we might have found it, I was over it. Because <laughs> never did really find anything with the finger on it. And then it gets down to, you know, that basic advice. You need to, you know, eat well, you know, maintain a certain diet, weight, you know, cut down on sugars, salt, exercise more, yeah, you know, all that good advice. You know, hence back, like I told my doctor, you know, you know, you need to make sure you're active and exercise. And I go, oh, yeah. I basically carry, you know, 16 pounds, you know, in my watering can over here and over there and over in hinder and yonder. All about 60 times in the morning sometimes in the midday and then in the late evenings where on a bad day 
I could do it 180 times. It's really nice when I can only do it like 120. Even I start to wear down. And you know, that could all be part of it too. Just the heat. When I first started doing this, gardening this year with the blazing sun and all the heat and humidity, and you know, everybody's talking about it all over everywhere, about how brutal it's been. It was extremely hard on me. I was talking to my friend, Reagan, you know, down there in Louisiana. Down there where the gators grow bigger than the horn toads. You know, they got snapping turtles down there bigger than hubcaps, you know. Yeah. And they eat them things too. They surely will. They don't only eat gators. They eat them there turtles. Along with other things too, I hear. You never know what you're going to find in their gumbo. Be leery now. Especially if you see something making waves in the pot. It could still be alive. I'm just saying. Anyway, to find people. And yeah, we talk. And I was telling them, you know, it take, took me over the year again to get back to where it don't bother me as much. And yeah, I got COPD. I sure, surely do. I got emphysema. Yeah. But I'm down to just one inhaler. That's mostly because can't afford the other one. I mean, who can afford to buy one little thing of medicine and it's $500? Yeah. $500. For just one. For 30 days. That's insane. But in another country, it won't even be 100. That's even more insane. And nobody ever addresses that problem. I don't care whether they've got a donkey or an elephant. It just never gets addressed. We get told about it, that prescription drugs in all other parts of the world are, they ain't even half as much as what we all pay. And that's about as far as it goes. And I know, because I've talked to many of you with this inflation going stupid like it has, again, for basically no reason, because if you think about it, Gas prices were nearly as high as they rose to back in 2008 and again in 2012. You can look all that up. And we didn't see inflation like we're seeing now. <laughs> in, my hum, hum, in my humble, educated opinion, we're just being bent over and having the wood laid to us because they know they can and the powers that be they won't do anything about it because it sort of goes along the way they want it all to be in the end yep surely it does but I like I said I know I know other seniors out there right now that they're skipping their medications they're only taking half or they're taking one their medicine today but not tomorrow all of that is not good but they have to Food costs have risen, you know, double or more. Electricity's up. Gas is up. Natural gas is up. I mean, everything is up. I mean, used to be you could catch a cold for free. Now, it's twice the price. A little levity there, but I mean, that's God's truth. Heaven forbid you get sick. Because you can't afford, you can't afford to get sick, and it's sort of like my great grandfather told me one time. He said, "Tommy, I'd asked him how old he was, and you know, normally those old folks back then would say older than dirt, but you know what? Great granddad said, he said, Tommy, I'm so old I can't afford to die, so don't worry about it, boy. And you know, there's actually some truth to that." I can't afford to die either. It costs too much money. Put a burden on my children. And I'm sure many of you are in the same situation. But what do we do? Yeah, powers B won't let us be buried in the backyard no more. Yeah, even that is a system. Even that has laws where you got to spend money just to die anymore. 
It's an amazing world we live in. But who's to blame? Well, I take my share of it because I've allowed it to happen. Maybe you have too. I'm thinking we all should take a little blame for just the way it is. Because we all share in it. It's not like it all came all on its own. Whew, I ain't been down this way in a while. Figured, well, why not? Since we're just out riding, there's some mud. There on the left is clearing some more land. Yeah, people are getting out of the cities, I've heard, out of the suburbs and urban areas. And they're coming on out into the countryside. But I do hope, and I do pray, that they leave what ran them out of the cities behind. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. They got to remember the reasons they wanted to come out to the country. What chased them out. Because at one point in time, they loved living in their cities or they wouldn't have been there to begin with. Well, it looks like for this moment in time, the rain has slowed down and almost stopped. And yeah, I'm getting old, because for the life of me, I don't remember where this road goes. I know it goes back from where we came. Yes, it does. But just where, I'm not sure. And as you can tell, this ride is one of those, again, a ride to nowhere. With no time to get there, we're just driving. And in all truth, we haven't been driving all that far. Because thankfully for no traffic, I can just sort of meander around. Yep, take my time. Well, now I know where we're at. We're at Gamble Store Road, and we're going to take a left. We all took a vote. You might not have heard it. You know, we play that game. Uh, how many want to go left? How many want to go right? How many want to go straight? And majority wins. You know, sort of like pure democracy here in the focus. Which means one group wins, and the other two groups are pissed off. That's actually how democracy works, you know, by the way. Herein lies why our founding fathers are smart enough to make us a, you know, republic, not a straight out democracy. Some refer to straight democracy as mob rule, which, yeah, it is. See, the majority vote carries it. And, I mean, let's just say, the majority vote, there was just 100 people to make, you know, life easier. And... 51 voted for something and 49 didn't. Well, see, he got almost half pissed off. Yeah. I mean, there's really no good way to make people happy and get to where everything's equal and fair for all, is there? Well, now we're back in the Tallahassee Police Department jurisdiction. Yep, the PJ, as it's called. By those in city council, they can be talking one day Hey, you know, back when I used to go to city council, back when I thought I could make a difference before I knew it was all corrupt anyway, and the same powers to be, you know, the people that squeeze the money out of the city for their own benefit. Hey, there's some honey for sale. That's a good thing. I got to remember that. I'm going to stop by there one day, get us some honey. What do you think, honey? Anyway, why is it all politicians are rich? You ever wonder about that? I wonder. Of course, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know the reason. And you probably do, too. You can't elect an honest man to political office because he's got to be dishonest to even run, if you think about it. They'll make promises that they know damn well they can have no power to keep. That's fact. And the one thing you do if you ever do in your life and you want to know, write down what your favorite politician promises while he's campaigning. Then later, 
you know, once he's in office, getting close to next time he's begging for money and everything, get reelected again. Actually, write down, be truthful now, of how many he got accomplished or she got accomplished. You know, and judge him by accomplishments, not by words and promises. Yeah. You'll see a stark difference should you do that. So really, what's one little old man got to do? How can he change the world? Well, probably can't. I can do this though. I started out doing this just for my children and my grandchildren. And you know, certain close friends and family. And then it all wound up to be them. And about 20,000 others came along for the ride. Woo! It has been a while since I've been down this way. Cause I forgot this came out here. I mean, we ain't too far from the house, all things be told. Nope, we aren't. Hmm. Well, we're gonna head her on up this way. We would whip in here to the barbecue, but they're always sold out. It goes real quick. I think they're only open a certain time on certain days. You know, like Wednesdays and Saturdays or, you know, stuff like that. And, hey, don't get me started about car prices. Used or new. Woo! Now, I've prayed about little pokey here. You know, I've been having to work on her, too. But she's finally, you know, back puttering along best she can. The old gal's got a few miles on her. She's going to be getting a few more, hopefully. We're going to take a ride up here. Yeah, I heard all you say, let's go right, because we went left last time. It's unusual for us to go right. Of course, we could, you know, all stop in here if you wanted to and look at all the junk this guy's got. He just about got anything you might want and a whole lot of things you might not have thought you wanted. Now, there on the right is an iconic structure. That is a cotton mill or cotton gin is what it is. You know, they bring in the raw cotton, which will be happening here in the upcoming weeks. And they run it through there, and it's a whole bunch of, you know, machinery. And it takes the cotton seeds out of the cotton. And then it's packed in bales again, where the cotton shipped off. Yeah, primarily to China. Yeah. That's where about 80% of our cotton goes. Didn't used to. We used to grow a lot of cotton and send it all around the south to make clothes right here. Well, we don't know more. But then they take the cotton seed out. Of course, that cotton seed is used, you know, also to make next year's crop. But also, they press those cotton seeds. And they get cotton seed oil. Yes, they do. <laughs> they get cotton seed meal after they press the cotton seed for the oil. Pretty much every part of the cotton plant is utilized, in case you didn't know. Yeah, there's some more of them bagworms up on a, oh, another pecan tree, which are really not bagworms. I was wrong. Officially, they're tent worms. Yeah, I guess once you look at it, it does look like a tent. But you know, us little old common people, we're okay with the bagworms. And there you can see the kudzu taking over that guy's forest. Lovely stuff. Another gift from China. Maybe that's what they had in mind all the time when they, you know, gave it to us. You know, back in 1800 and something. You know, it'll consume their whole country. Then we can just sneak on in and take it over. Because it's definitely, if you've been paying attention, consuming a lot of the woodlands 
on the left and right as we drive along in this particular area. Oh, and it's been a lovely ride. If you've been paying attention to the countryside, we've seen crops, haylands, lots of forests and trees, many different homes of many different sizes. As we roll along the way, yeah. You know, if you just sit here and look as we drive along, life hasn't really changed a lot, it would appear, unless you pay close attention. Yeah, people aren't going places like they used to anymore because of the cost of food. Everything else is so high. They're staying home. Their vehicles are sitting in their driveways. They're not frequenting the fast food as often. Though I will admit, from the looks of it, every time I go by in the lines, and I know people are complaining about food prices and all that, but then here they are, going to their favorite fast food day in and day out. Makes no sense to me. And you know, since our Taco Bell opened, you know, that was a great event here in my little town. Yep, everybody had to go to Taco Bell. Finally, the news wore off. Then Papa John's opened up. Yep, got our second pizza place. So every time we get a second pizza place, one of the two goes belly up. Yep. Last time was when Pizza Hut came in. And our local uh, pizza place, it was locally owned and operated by fine family here in Tallahassee, Alabama, eventually went belly up because people didn't support them. No, imagine that. They went to Pizza Hut and supported a corporation. See, that's how we are. You know, it's just like all the people that instead of going to Superfoods, they go give their money away to the Waltons over there at Walmart. Sure. Because you know they ain't got enough money. You know, they're always, you know, in the top ten richest in the world. Yeah, so they need more. And they make things a few cents cheaper just so you know, everybody will flock over there thinking, oh yeah, we're doing a great thing. We're saving money. Yeah, we're saving money until everything else is gone. And then old Walmart sticks it to you. Right where you deserve it. Then what you gonna do? There's many places now. Your only option is Walmart. And they can charge whatever they wish to. Man, in my mind, hey, that's exactly what people wanted. Because they helped get it there. It ain't the government's fault. It ain't Walmart's fault. They don't tie your hands, put a rope around you, and drag you in the store. Nope. You go of your own free will. And I must admit, I go there for some things too. But there are things that I can't get in other places. And you might say, well, I can't afford to pay a little bit more. Well, in reality, <clears throat> that would be true for many. But when I'm talking with others about that simple fact, well, you know, I just can't afford to do this, can't afford to do that. The very first thing I ask them is, do you run your finances on a budget? And the answer to that 99.9% .9 of the time is no. And then come, well, I wish I could. I need to, but I just can't. You see, that's just lying to yourself. I lied to myself for a lot of years, too. I mean, we can all make a budget. You know, a real one. And in the course of making a budget, you actually sit down and see, if nothing else, where, pardon my language, you're pissing away your money. Yeah, 
when you sit down and discuss it with you and the family and make the right categories like eating out. Well, how much do we spend? And normally that answer will be, well, I don't know. How much do we? And then when you dig into it, if you really care and want to do this right, you find out, oh, wow, I didn't realize we were spending that. Or maybe it's other things. Frivolous things, you know, in the want category, not the need. And that's the other best advice I can give any youngin is learn the difference between a need and a want. And then understand, especially if you're one of those that said, well, <laughs> I ain't going to do this, or I ain't going to do that, or I won't eat this, or I won't eat that. You know, you might want to understand another word in life. It's called spoiled rotten. And unfortunately here, in the good old U.S. of A., as in most industrialized Western civilizations and countries, we are spoiled, slapped rot you know I know people that they won't eat meat that's got bones in it no everything's got to be boneless and they will tell you they just don't like it they do they just can't eat it so they'll pay extra to have somebody take the bones out knowing all the time the bones right beside the same meat they gonna be eating yeah and you got people that, oh no, it's got to be this, or it's got to be that, or they'll just starve to death and die, or so they say. I mean, the big thing that's been going around social media again, I knew it would come back, is the bugs. Yeah. Going to make us all eat bugs. Yeah. No. You can eat bugs if you want to. And in all truth and honesty, humans have been eating bugs for several hundred years. In fact, in a little old uh, area of the world, which is much larger than our area of the world, you know, known as Asia, they've been eating them bugs for centuries. And when I have visited certain Asian countries in my past, I have seen these bugs and I have even partaken of some of the bugs myself. Yep. Have I ate grasshoppers? You betcha. Have I ate crickets? Uh-huh. They're crunchy. And if they're ro roasted and toasted right, they're darn right tasty. Well, there comes a little puppy heading back home. He's a cutie. <laughs> oh. He's in a hurry. And we got another one right here. He's heading that way too. How y'all doing? Yep, they doing fine. And we got a big one right here. He's dragging his leash. He got away from somebody. Or maybe he just belongs there. And you know with that, with the cute puppies, I forgot all about what I was talking about. And it probably wasn't that important in the first place. I mean, the only reason we took a ride was so I could spend some time with all of you. Tell you, you know, how things were going with me. And listen to how things are going with you, too. And, you know, we get as many as we can in the focus before we take off. And for those of you who aren't, you know, physically along for the ride, you know, I'm sure, you know, if you got special things going on in your life, you'll let us know in the comments below the video. <coughs> yeah, I can see it rained. It's another one of them there, uh, ones that barely wet the dust. They just make everything a little bit on the damp, damper side. You know, used to be able to say moist, but now youngins have a thing against the word moist. 
Like, what do you say about cake anymore? My cake is so damp, it's yummy. Well, call me old school. I'm gonna say my cake's moist. Well, my batter's moist, my mashed potatoes, my meatloaf. It just doesn't seem right saying it's damp. <laughs> But that's where we've come to, hasn't it? Where words offend us more than reality. And here we are. We're back at my little piece of heaven on earth. And it may not be much to others, but it's definitely a lot to me. Just in time, too. Because the rain's coming again. I wonder where the kitty crew's at. They're held up somewhere. Hey, let's get unbuckled and uh, jump on out and see if we can find the kitty crew. Well, the one good thing about overcast skies and the rain as it slowly falls from the sky is the temperature is now 79. Yeah. And where once was sun, now it's shade. Remember when we were sitting here before we headed on out? It was 100 degrees. Woo! I'll take that any time, won't you? 79 is just lovely. And the rain is coming down a little bit harder. We better run on into the carport before we all get wet, right? Yep, we need to. Yep, left it in gear. See, when the car's all crowded like that, it's just hard to maneuver. You know, there have been times in my life back when I was working, so many hours, I'd get home, it'd be raining. I'd just be my son inside. And I'd just lay the seat back, listen to the rain, and before you knew it, I'd be slap asleep. You know, if you don't got one of them metal roofs and you want to enjoy the sounds of the rain on the metal roof, grab you some snacks, maybe a cold drink, you know, put on your comfy clothes, jump in your car and enjoy the relaxing sounds of the rain as it plays that willful tune. Pitter-patter, pitter-patter, oh, oh, oh. Listen to the rhythm of the falling rain Telling me what a fool I've been Yeah, I can't sing, but I like to And that's all that's important Now, seems like we're coming to a lull right now So let's make a dart for the car poked, okay? A little bit nippy there on the bear skin. Oh, glasses are all fogged up too. But we made it into the kaipot. Yes, we did. Let's see what the official climate control station has to say. Hmm, 77% humidity. We got to calibrate that a little bit more, don't you think? Because that sure looks like 100% falling from the sky out there. And it says 81 degrees here in the carport. So maybe our official climate control station is a little bit off. Could be. But does it really matter? No. <laughs> no, it don't. But I'll take the rain. You know, back, we've referred to it as liquid sunshine. Yes, we have. And it looks like now the rain set in for quite some time. But I'm fine with it because I toted my water this morning. Yep. One watering can at a time. So with this, see? I got a break. 
there'll be no afternoon watering upon this day. And maybe, depending on how much comes and falls, maybe there won't be any morning come Sunday tomorrow. And that'll give me more time when all of y'all show up so we can do a walkabout and a talk about our garden and yours too. You see, for those of you who do share in the comments below the video just how your garden grows, I love reading about it and seeing the differences from wherever you may be. It's just like the cooking videos, which I know some are saying right now you wish this had a been. Or maybe the gardening videos or the how-tos or the deep dives. See, everybody likes something different. Some actually even like it all. And I try, in my own little way, to throw a little bit out there for each and every one from day to day. And once I get past all this here, you know, lethargy and everything that I've sort of been suffering through, I plan on throwing a few more videos out there like I used to. I think part of it, I just sort of kind of lost my muse. If you see him running down the road, snatch them up for me and send them back. <laughs> yeah, it's coming down nicely now. See, I have a metal roof out there on my shop. Anytime I want to reminisce about the sound of a the falling rain on a hot tin roof, I can wander out there and listen all day long. Next time, I think I'll do just that. I'll wait till it gets a little cooler. I gotta fix that window. Yeah, that's project to come. It'd be nice if I could have found a window to fit that thing. But like most of the things Mr. Carlisle built, ain't no such size. <laughs> Mr. Gray, you made it over here to me, didn't you? <laughs> Where were you? I know you were somewhere, weren't you? So now you're here with me. Where's the rest of the crew? You don't know? Oh, there's one there. There's others. Once they hear my voice, they'll be coming too. Is that you, Spooky? Yep, that's Spooky with his old pal, Mr. Gray. So that means Speedy's somewhere near. She may be in the bunker. It starts to rain, as you've seen, Speedy ain't up to it. Not at all. And of course, Cleo's probably down with her second family. Yeah. She sort of Runs on down there and get her love down there too. And I don't mind. There's more Cleo to love. Well, y'all, with the rain come, other things must come too. And what better time than go dig around the fridge and figure out what'll be for supper. And hey, maybe some of y'all will stop on by and come on in the country kitchen and help me out. You just never know. It all depends on what we're having, right? And it all depends whether you can bribe Gracie and Lily a bit and get by. Oh. And as you can see, things are still growing. Just a little preview of many of the things we will be talking about come tomorrow as we walk about the gardens with you. Yeah, it's tapering off a little bit. It's still rather steady. So y'all, as you can see, the rain continues. And uh, the ride is over. And I gotta get on in the house. And like I said, dig through the fridge and see what I can slap together for supper tonight for the little old man. The kitty crew, 
they're going to have nine lives. Yeah, or maybe Friskies too. So theirs ain't hard. But I've got a decision to make. Yeah, I sort of got something in mind. They use something from the garden and something from the freezer too. And like I said, just come by. And like I said, if you drop on by later and lend a hand, I'll show you what we're up to too in the little old country kitchen. So hey, until I, the kitty crew, well you saw Spooky and Mr. Gray, and I'm sure Speedy and Cleo and Magoo are somewhere too. And I know where Gray's in a little bit off. They're waiting. Yeah, they're waiting in the living room for the old man as well. So all of us, see you on that next video. Y'all take care out there. Stay safe. Stay well. Do the best you can. Prepare as you must. And as you can. And remember, there's more to life than being anxious and living in fear. Especially if you have the belief in here. Y'all take care. Stay safe and may God bless you all. Until I, the Kitty Crew, see you on the next video. Goodbye for now. Yeah, that's going to cut down on the work for the day. I was actually thinking about mowing. That can wait for another day. Ooh. Listen to the birds. They're just loving it too. Anything to beat the heat. Ooh. I'm telling you. It's a chilly in the wheelie when it's hitting on that bare skin. We got a header on in. Well, there's Speedy. Speedy, what are you sitting there and getting all moist for? It looks like you got snow on you. <laughs> you holding down the front porch, aren't you, baby? <laughs> okay. Well, I sure do appreciate it. Oh, I don't see Lily bit, but she'll be in there somewhere waiting on me. Oh, later on.